Hi everyone, this is Dwight with Complete Leadership Academy. It's our goal to give you everything that you need to lead, to inspire, to achieve. And today we're talking about grit. You know, in 2013, Angela Duckworth had a, a very famous TED Talk where she debunked the myth that, you know, success is all about talent, about skill. Uh, instead, after years and years of research, she showed that you know, a lot of times the perseverance, having passion about something, sticking with it, keeping going, right, is the ingredient that sets people apart. So today I'm going to give you eight secrets on how you, when you're faced with uncertainty, with fear, with doubt, all the stuff that happens, whether you're leading small teams, big teams, you're owning your own company, you're in sales, doesn't matter who you are. When that fear comes, what can I do to expand instead of contract? Quick note, this is gonna be a tactical training event. That's why it's a longer video. So what I need you to do is just grab out a piece of paper and a pen so that you can not only take notes, but I'm gonna give you assignments throughout. So grab that right now. With that, let's dive right into it. First of all, we're gonna talk about perspective. We're gonna shift the way that we think about fear about doubt, about uncertainty, and our reaction to it. Uh, then we're gonna give you tactical tools. I'm gonna give you eight specific secrets, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you actionable items. What can I actually do next? That's why I want you to have your, your pen, paper ready, so that when you get out of this video, you're able to do something. That's what's most important. So to kick it all off, I want you to think about three people that you admire. These could be people in your family, people who are alive, who have passed, this could be a historical figure. Could be somebody that you don't know, but you admire out in the world. They stand for something. You believe uh, what they believe. Whatever it is, three people, jot that down right now. So as you think of those three people, I, I want you to understand that, you know, we all have the same biology. We're all built the exact same. However, there's something about the people that you admire, whether it's their struggle, maybe it's their story, maybe it's their advice, but there's something that they have figured out, that they have unlocked in the face of challenges, of fear, of things that you know, would most likely hold others back, but they have found something and be able to overcome it. And a lot of times it's those stories that make us admire them the most, right? But why is it that some rise and others fall? When we're hit with the mountain, with the challenge, with the things that you're going through right this second, you have a choice. And the people that we admire often if you think about it, if we were to do a breakout session right now and you were to speak with people about who you admire, you'd probably talk about their resolve, their perseverance, right? What they did in the face of fear. When fear hit them, the thing that we're most afraid of hits us. We have a choice. We can either contract or we can expand. And so for the rest of this session, this video, this conversation, we're going to talk about eight C's that we're going to write down together that we can put in place, that we can practice when we face our, our greatest fear. And speaking of fear, I listen to a podcast pretty much every day on my morning run. Eddie said today, he said, find that spot where you're most scared to go and go there. And I love this because look, fear is part of our brain chemistry and it's not something that we can control. This is our amygdala and it connects our thoughts and our feelings. So if we have a deep rooted fear, you know, when I, I was eight years old, uh, my best friend and his dad took me to the Royal Gorge, which is uh, a rickety little, back then it was, a bridge about thousand feet up, uh, above a river. And I was just fearless. I was looking over the edge, just having a great time, kind of shaking back and forth. And his dad came up to me and said, save your life. And it immediately created a fear of heights. Now I have this amygdala that has hijacked me. My daughter and I went to New York for a father-daughter trip. Happened to be on the 47th floor of our hotel. 
and walked into the room and it was a wall of windows right over Times Square and I just froze. My amygdala hijacked me. So when fear hits, there's not a lot that we can do. We rationalize the irrational. I'm gonna fall out the window. And there's that fight or flight and a lot of times we contract and we go back. Here's exactly what happened. Immediately the fear is put in, whether it's spiders, whether it's uh, fear of heights, no matter what your fear is, you know, that conversation with one of your team members, that one-on-one -on -one that you're afraid to have, the big presentation about your business. These are things that we are naturally afraid of. What happens is it immediately goes in, becomes that visual thalamus, and then the visual cortex touches the amygdala and immediately we contract. And that's what we wanna reverse or at least give us some awareness and some tools to overcome that so that we can expand instead of contract. So now I want you to write down, draw, describe in detail, what does fear look like to you? Whether it is heights, maybe it's that conversation, maybe it's the results, maybe it's the change, whatever it is, what is holding you back right now? Write that out right now. And now let's get tactical with what can we do when we're faced with fear. C number one is courage. In the face of fear, we're gonna do it anyway. We've heard it. Now, many of us know about the comfort zone and we think, okay, well, I've gotta leap out of my comfort zone to get to where the magic happens. Even Neil Donald Walsh has this great quote that says, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Okay. Well, how about if I'm not ready to leap out of that? I can hardly move. How can I kind of, instead of leaping, think of expanding? And I want to introduce you to this courage circle. And the courage circle just allows you to slowly kind of push your way out and expand. Instead of taking a full leap, what I wanna do in the face of fear, instead of contracting, instead of allowing it to pull me down, I want to push past. So for example, when my daughter and I walked into that 47th floor wall of windows, they opened, the windows opened. Let's be clear about that, that's crazy. She grabbed my hand and she said, just follow me. She knew that I was afraid. She knew that I could hardly move. She grabbed my hand and we slowly walked to the edge. And she helped me realize, even though my amygdala was telling me, hey, we're rationalizing the irrational, you're gonna fall out this window. She helped me realize you're not gonna fall out. The windows only open about this much. You're safe, everything's okay. And so I was able to expand my courage circle. So I think in the face of fear, C number one is to focus on expanding versus contracting. Expanding your courage circle instead of leaping, you know, to, to find success. Just make a little bit of progress. C number two is I want you to think of your most confident self. And I put a little piece here because if you think about, you know, your, your favorite board game, like choose a piece, Monopoly, let's say, and you're the, the horse or the hat or the, the, the iron or you know, maybe it's Candyland and you, you pick a color, whatever it is, and that is a very tangible piece, right? And as you go through life, even the game of life, you have a piece. Well, if you think about your most confident self, when you're doing what you're best at, we all have something that we're kind of known for. My, my sister-in-law, she's incredible at events and she's great with the kids. And so we go to her for that. You know, my wife is very strategic. She has that thoughtful mind. And so we, we go to her for that. We all have that thing that we're really good at. So when you're in that space, what starts to happen is you take control of what's called that prefrontal cortex saying, no, we're not out of control. The amygdala is shutting us down, but we're gonna take control. That's where your attention and your focus comes in. That's where your planning and your goal setting happens. When you are executing as your most competent self, you're able to strategically think about things. You're 
uh, adaptable. You're making quick decisions, right? You, you're, you're not just about emotions. You are able to shift to the more logical. So as fear comes up, number two is having that competence. And what I want you to do right now is just write out, just draw or describe who are you as your most competent self. What do you sound like? What do you look like? Tony Robbins talks, talks about your state. When you have this incredible state, right? And he, he gets really excited right before he goes on and he does a lot of this to bring out his most competent self. Who are you as your most confident self? So go ahead and draw, describe, detail that out. And taking it back to our courage circle, our most competent self is the part of us that can help us expand and start to push on the boundaries of our comfort zone, of that courage circle, right? As you can see here, it basically shows that most of the time it's our most competent self that can say, no, I, I can do this, I, I'm okay. And then we kind of tell ourselves through self-reinforcement that, hey, I, I'm more capable that I'm giving myself credit for. I, I don't have to go like this. I can actually handle what's right in front of me, right? So, and what that does is it starts to reprogram your amygdala. It redefines what fear is to you and what you're capable of. So then your brain is telling a different story to your body. You're telling yourself a, a totally different story. And over time, you know, you, you start saying not only maybe Maybe I can do this. Maybe I'm more capable than I thought, but it allows that prefrontal cortex to activate and take over faster in those times of fear. So that's where your resilience and your mental toughness and that, that grit starts to be created. And then that creates conviction. Now conviction number three is all about that undeniable belief. Because over time, you're telling yourself, oh, I'm capable of this. No, I can do this. No, I'm, oh, absolutely. I can, I can go up to a 47th floor, uh, Times Square, all windows, walk straight up, not fall out. I'm totally fine now. Once I choose courage, I choose to expand instead of contract. I tap into my most confident self because I've defined it so many times. That's the thing that helps me kind of maneuver and stretch that circle. And then I start to tell myself, wait a second, uh, maybe I can't. Oh, wait, I can. And I'm starting to redefine what's possible and tell myself a different story. So why? <laughs> why, why do I want to reprogram my fear and start expanding, right? Well, uh, obviously another one of my favorites uh, from a TED talk years ago was Simon Sinek who had the golden circle that, that shifted the way that we think about uh, the stories that we tell. And we want to start with why. And, and look, every leadership video uh, that's trending right now talks about the why getting to the core of the reasons why we do the things that we do. Well, if I want undeniable belief, it starts with why. And then once we're able to do that, it creates these consequences. And this is number four of why am I doing this? Why would I expand versus contract? It's so easy to just settle with what I have to ask for a lower floor, to step away from the fear instead of move toward it. I'd rather just run. And what I want you to think about is not only the negative consequences, if I don't then, but what if I do? What if I do really clearly define my why? What if I do step forward into my fear? What if I choose courage, the confidence, the conviction? Then the, on the other side of that is not only the, the carrot, but the promised land. You know, I had a CEO uh, who was incredible at painting the picture of the promised land. And if we can just get through the desert, then on the other side of that is a world that we've never even experienced, that we've never even imagined. So being able to lead with, with a, a greater impact, being able to be completely fulfilled and inspire those around us 
uh, on a regular basis to help others achieve incredible results um, while we, you know, achieve our own milestones, right? Those are things that, that we want. And those are the consequences waiting on the other side of us choosing to expand versus contract. You know, I think about my son, he was a gymnast for about six years. Then he moved into break dancing. This is him break dancing, very, very cool. But one of the, the stories that he told me was, you know, on Fridays we'd have conditioning days and we'd have to do wall sits. And there were about 10 kids on his team, right? They would be doing wall sits for about a minute and at the minute mark, all their legs were just shaking, right? And the, the coach would say, if you fall, if you give up now, I'll add a minute to your entire team. And so the consequences for them immediately was not just about themselves. It's much easier for me to just contract, quit, that's it. For him, it was, no, it's about my team. I want to rise together. I'm not going to let my team down. The consequence was so clear and physically <laughs> you would look at everybody and they would look at each other and be like, we got this together. The coach made it clear what the consequence was for the entire team. So they did that for others. And as leaders, that's what we can do for our team as well. So let's get extremely clear about the positive and negative of why do we want to expand versus contract. We can just ask ourselves on the positive side, why would I expand in the face of fear instead of contract? Well, if I do, then, so now I want you to just take a minute to complete these sentences. Pause the video and just write this out. If I push past what I wanna do right now, if I choose to expand, if I choose to face it, step into this fear, if I do, then positive. I can, they can, they will, right? They get this, they can experience this, they share, I become, right? They become, and if I don't, if I don't, then this. And once you start writing it down and get very clear and you complete these sentences, why am I doing this? And this creates very clear positive and negative consequences that you've said over and over, then in the face of it, your brain will reprogram and you will expand instead of contract. So do that now. One thing that always helps when having conversations with leaders about fear and about contracting versus expanding is getting clear of what's stopping me from moving forward. What, what is holding me back from having those tough conversations, from you know, leading change in difficult times, facing the people who are against me? Whatever that fear is, getting extremely clear, writing it out. Let's just be honest with ourselves of what it is. And then from there, I get very certain about what's real and what's not. We call it fact or fiction. And that means I'm gonna ask myself, is this dangerous? like the fear, right? Me getting close to a rickety bridge, thousand foot up, probably not smart. Let me step away. I'm not going to, I'm not going to expand and, you know, and, and be reckless. That's ridiculous. So is it dangerous? Can I actually do it physically or mentally? Can I expand? Can I face this fear? Can I figure it out? Is it ethical? You know, does the consequence outweigh the effort? Maybe it's too much effort. It doesn't make sense. I'm just going to let it go. That's okay. But the rest of it has to go into this excuses bin because that's all it is. So you have to take control of your brain instead of letting it continuously control you. So fact or fiction? Fact. Is there danger? Are there real limitations? Okay, it's hard. But so what? I can figure it out. It will take work. It will take time. That's okay. But when we must, we can. And, and maybe it's, oh, I, I, I don't know what to expect. Well, that is not a reason not to move forward. Okay? I don't know how. That's okay. Grab a, 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 someone around you to help you, to support you. Slack someone, whatever it is. I don't have time. I don't have the effort. Look, if you've made this a priority... If it's something that's important, then figure it out. It's too hard. These are the things that become excuses because we all have a lot going on. 
but our people are, are waiting for us to step in to that current circle and start to expand. So get certainty about what's real, what's not, fact and fiction. Once I've figured out, okay, yes, I am moving forward, I'm expanding, then yes, I wanna make sure I'm doing the right activity. I'm not just busy, but I'm productive with it at the right time, with the right people, with the right intensity to get the right result. And then if I do that consistently, then all of a sudden I start to see results. Then I start to reprogram my amygdala and I start taking control. And what I love about consistency as well is that as leaders, instead of going up and down with our, our emotions and being on a roller coaster, we can regulate our emotions so that we can be more consistent for our people. And at the end of the day, it becomes a choice. So what are you going to do? Are you going to choose grit? putting together the passion that you have for your people, for your industry, for growing as a leader? Or are you going to choose to contract and run? I invite you to choose grit. When fear hits, it's going to hit today, tomorrow, every day. Are you going to contract? Or are you going to expand? I'm hopeful that these eight simple principles can remind you that this is an art that takes work, but it is something that you can absolutely master over time. Courage, confidence, conviction, having clear consequences, clarity, certainty, consistency, choosing to ignite it. Now, another quick tactical tool I want to give you is the 101 leadership questions to spark that meaningful dialogue in one-on-ones, team meetings, reflection, leadership meetings, and more. Hundreds of leaders are using it uh, every single day, and I go over that in this video right here.